A land of coups, corruption and polarised politics. The courts prepare to prosecute the country's elite, while a former leader gets ready to come back from exile. So what's ahead for Bangladesh? This is Inside Story. Hello, I'm Sami Zaydan. Top politicians and businessmen in Bangladesh will go to court next week, charged with corruption. Well, since a military coup in January, the caretaker government has rounded up more than 150,000 people in an anti-corruption drive. As Lucy Ashton now reports, the country's new leaders seem intent on putting its predecessors on trial. At the heart of the matter are these two women, Sheikh Hasina Wajed and Mrs. Halida Zia and they are reported to hate one another. They are the bickering Begums of Bangladesh and have dominated politics there for 16 years. Each one heads her own party and were the chief contenders in the upcoming general elections. Or at least they were until this. Months of protests spilled over into violence killing at least 45. With the country in chaos, the army rather quietly took control in January. There wasn't much resistance. A state of emergency was declared, an interim government installed, and life on the streets continued much as normal. But not so for the elite. Sheikh Hasina was in the UK when she was charged with four murders and corruption and barred from returning. The government has now relented, and she plans to return to Bangladesh to clear her name. Her arch rival, Mrs. Zia, was nearly forced into exile herself. She is now under house arrest, and her son is languishing behind bars. He is facing corruption charges. So too are most of the political elite, and the others are under close scrutiny. Well, joining us now are our guests from Dhaka. We have Mahbub Al Alam. He's the editor of The Independent. That's an English language newspaper in Bangladesh. Kumar Murshid is the UK political advisor to the Awami League, that's Sheikh Hasina's party. And joining us from Toronto, Canada, is exiled journalist Salim Samad. Thank you all for being with us. My first question to Mr. Mahboubal in Dakar. Do you think the caretaker government it really plans to hand over power as soon as possible to the next elected government, or is it getting a little too comfortable, as some suggest, on the seat of power? Well, <clears throat> the caretaker government has made repeated announcements that it is going to hand over power to an elected government but the, it will take time, some time to hold election an election that is free from muscle power from money power and an election that is fair, free and credible and the election commission has indicated that it would take at least 18 months to prepare a credible voter list with photograph and make all other preparations for a free and fair election. All right, let's uh, go over to Mr. Salim in Toronto, Canada. Uh, what do you make of suggestions that the restrictions which have been placed on both Sheikh Hasina and Khalid Azia indicate that the uh, interim government, the caretaker government, tends to do more than just prepare for elections? I don't believe the government is uh, interested in a free and fair election. The government's main priority is to stamp out corruption, and they are refusing to strengthen the democratic institutions. Well, when you say stamp out corruption, could you elaborate a little bit on at least how you see it? Well, how do Bengalis view that role? Well, corruption is definitely a major problem in Bangladesh, but that's not the only problem in Bangladesh. I mean, you, you talk from in a, for, in a government uh, utility services to, to any, uh, any activities in the government or outside the government, there is corruption. There is corruption in the streets of the capital. Uh, is, there is corruption everywhere. But uh, when you look into the pattern of uh, the recent government's action against corruption, they have only targeted the politicians, as if the politicians have done corruption, and, uh, and they have not targeted the businessmen who are involved in corruption. They have not targeted the government officers, the bureaucrats who, have, who are very well so, inside so the corruption. So this is selective anti-corruption so is what you're saying? Yes, they are using this word called criminal, criminalization of politics, 
Well, I understand the criminalization of politics has definitely taken root in the Bangladesh politics. But again, if you want to stamp out corruption, you don't have to only target the politicians. The politicians. All right, I want there to go over to Mr. Kumar, who, of course, uh, advises one of the largest political groups, the Awami League. How, what do you make of suggestions that uh, parties such as the Awami League have squandered their public support by both feuding with each other as well as the issue of corruption? Well, no, you see, I mean, I think it's, it's not proper to, to draw this parity that, that people often tend to between the BNP and the Awami League. The Awami League uh, is the party that is responsible for the establishment of Bangladesh as an, in, as an independent state. It is the party that has uh, uh, you know, a massive uh, grassroots uh, uh, presence in Bangladesh. And historically, uh, it is a party that is very much rooted uh, in a sort of uh, the popular struggle and the popular culture of the country. Uh, it would be wrong, in my view, to simply, uh, you know, uh, treat both these parties in, 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 the, in the sort of way that, uh, you know, one does. We're talking about both as if they, they constitute some kind of parity uh, between them. Uh, there is no doubt that corruption is a major challenge in the country. And it has to be said that the, the steps taken by this interim government have been widely supported by the people of Bangladesh, by the Bangladeshi diaspora, by everyone that, that uh, certainly I okay. have spoken to uh, in the as initial somebody stages. Who advises, sorry, as someone who advises yeah. uh, Sheikh Hasina, will she be returning then to, uh, to Bangladesh yes, next week? Yes, of course week? she will be. Uh, uh, there's, there's, there's absolutely no question. I mean, Sheikh Hasina already made an attempt to return. She was uh, stopped at the airport by British Airways uh, uh, citing 